back. I'm Bella, and this is another Good Morning KU, our last one of the semester. So sad. We've had so much fun doing it this semester, and we're excited for our last show. I know, and I'm excited to get to host with you one last time. I know. Time. What a dynamic we are right sad. <laughs> <laughs> but what are your plans next, do you know, for next semester? Next semester, still on the same track, taking the same kind of classes, um, and hopefully doing a little bit more of this. How about uh, you? Absolutely. I honestly... No clue. I know I'm taking Journalism 488 with mm -hmm. Cal. Are you taking it? No. No? Okay. Well, I'm excited for that because you get to produce your own show. Right, um, like Connor does. Exactly. So I'm excited to hopefully get to do some of that. Okay, wait. Maybe I'll be on your show. A do light it. bulb just went off in there my head. Go. There we go. We've already figured it out. So that's great. We'll do that. So how was your Thanksgiving? My Thanksgiving was great. As you know, I drove home, yes. got to see my dog, um, went out for the big Wednesday night, day before Thanksgiving thing, oh, yeah. saw everyone from my high school, and Chicago was really decked out for the holidays. So that, that was awesome. That is so fun. I'm sure it has a bunch of fun stuff to do in Chicago in the winter, especially for Christmas. I'm sure that's Absolutely. Insane. And that's what about great. you, Bella? So I actually went to Southeast Kansas where my dad lives, basically. So I went and hung out with him on our farm. and. Did all of the fun farm stuff, rode four-wheelers, hung out with my cousins, and did all that. Of course, the Wednesday night drinking that everyone right. does, yep. as, as they <laughs> said, the night before Thanksgiving. Because when you have to go home for Thanksgiving and deal with all the, do you have a boyfriend? Oh, How, gosh, What are you yes. doing after graduation? Questions. You know, you need a little bit of something to dose that. But, um, great. So, did you hear about the beer spill this week? I saw the beer spill picture. Hilarious. Okay. So funny. I wonder what Just, type of beer that was. I wonder if the guy driving the truck got in trouble for the beer spilling all over the road. That's a great question. I know that happened close kind of to my, um, where I drive to campus actually. It was on close to Louisiana on 23rd. So there's the picture of it. That is just... So funny, and what are the odds that it happens in a college town? Right. That is, that's amazing. What actually. I was wondering <laughs> is like, were people running up and grabbing it up for grabs, trying that's, to get as much beer as possible? I know that happened in my hometown and there was a bunch of people on the highway grabbing all these seltzers and things right. that had fallen off of a beer truck one time, so that is so funny. But, so Miss USA just happened. Right, I know you're very involved in that. Huge, love it. So do, have you watched any of the Miss USA stuff or know no, anything about I it? No, I haven't. All I know is that my friend Hayden Brax was Miss yes. Kansas and I like her a lot. Yes, love her. She's great. She was a great Miss Kansas. Same with our current Miss Kansas is actually Gracie Hunt, who's Clark Hunt's daughter. Right. The owner of the Chiefs. So that is a huge thing. There is a picture of her. She looks gorgeous. Yes, yeah, she looks absolutely stunning in her um, dress. I know it was inspired from a former Miss Universe dress so that is just such a beautiful dress and she looks so good but now this next one was Miss Tennessee USA and she won the costume state con costume contest excuse me and it was just an incredible dress I love that and then here are the winners of Miss USA and Miss Teen USA wow Two beautiful women Miss so beautiful former Miss Kentucky USA and former Miss Florida Teen USA I love that blue dress yes I love it all the details on that dress are incredible. right and especially Miss Kentucky, former Miss Kentucky, now Miss USA on the left. She looks ab absolutely stunning. It was so simple, but so beautiful on her. So that was incredible. And she's a very down-to-earth seeming girl. So that's awesome. I love to hear it. Yeah. So what are, are you excited for finals or no? Dreading? I'm dreading. And, you know, the week before stop week is always a pileup of assignments and making sure you do well on those assignments because they're the last ones that go in. And Absolutely. I think everyone's a little bit stressed out and on the same page about Absolutely. that. I, I know I have like a million assignments to do before even next week. Right. So I'm like cramming to get all exactly. of those in, which is just... Oh, that's just so stressful. But we're all going to get it done and we're going to be okay. And, and we then, wish everyone luck as well yes, on their finals week. Of course. And I know Christmas is right around the corner. So yes. that's always keeping me in a happy mood. Exactly. Watching, watching some Christmas. I always put like with that crackling um, fire on my TV while I'm studying. <laughs> and I'm like, this is not helpful. But I, I like love it. that. So it brings I'm it more gets in me the in Christmas mood. mood. The last time I was on here, I said I was feeling like Scrooge because it was before Thanksgiving. Yeah. I didn't feel the Christmas mood but now I do absolutely so I'm excited now absolutely all right well I think that's all we have for this week Aww. I know sad last one but thank you guys for watching and we'll be back with an interview
Hi, I'm Gabe Daniel, and joining me today is Nathaniel Duncan. Nathaniel, you're a senior here. I am. You're about to head into your capstone semester. Can you tell me just a little bit about what all you've done within the J School so far? Well, we'd be here for quite a while if I told you everything, but if we're just talking about the studio, um, I've been a part of Shill since I was a freshman in 2018, which is hard to believe that, you know, it's almost already over. The time has just flown by, but I've worked on several editions of Good Evening KU, and then for most of my time in this studio, actually my whole time in this studio in the J School here, I've worked on my own show, Jayhawk Jukebox, which this is my fourth semester as producer, and it's also my last because by the time I'm doing my capstone, you have to do an internship with a media outlet, and it's going to take up a lot of time. So I'm sad, sadly, next Thursday will be my last show in the studio producing that show. And out of the shows you've produced, which one would be your favorite? Oh, man. Like, just specific, like, well, well Jayhawk Jukebox is definitely, you know, that's so close to me because I started that, um, I took 210 for a second time, and... Um, I'd already done all the assignments the first time around, so my assignment was basically just, you know, starting up a show, and mm -hmm. it, um, I just, just started doing that. This is, it's hard to believe that I actually started doing this right before COVID hit, too. It's crazy to think that when I started the show, the world was a much different place yeah, than it is now. it was like five years ago, almost. It, it, it really does, um, and it's weird, too, because my crew used to be super, super small, and now it's... It's a pretty big crew now, so the show has grown quite a bit since I've started, but it's just been one of the most enjoyable experiences I've had here at KU, and probably my most ex my fun experience at the J School as well. And when I was saying capstone earlier, could you sort of explain that, just in case for those watching who might not know, and what your plans for that are? Yeah, so for the capstone, this is a class that you take right before you graduate, and there are several paths you can take. You can take a documentary class, an internship class. There's also, I think, state house reporting for the more of the MMJs. But since I'm a producer, I want to get more into like behind the scenes of like a real TV station. So I've reached out to several stations in Kansas City and Topeka. And I also want to try to maybe do some play-by-play, -play, so I've reached out to a couple places for that as well. But there's a lot of options for that internship. It doesn't have to be just TV. It can be radio. It can be podcasts. It can be a lot of different things. So there's a lot of different options that you have when you eventually get to your capstone. And do you have any plans for once you are done with your capstone semester? That's hard to say. Um, you know, I, I really can't say right now. There's a couple different things I could probably do when I'm done. Obviously, looking for a job is important, but I've also looked into graduate school for sport management. We're both in sport management, and especially we know that those teachers that have been, like, um, teach those lower-end sport management classes, they went to graduate school, and they had so many cool experiences, and that's what's kind of drawing me to apply to several graduate schools for sport management because I realize those opportunities are so great. But also getting a job out of this great journalism school would be a huge plus too. This is one of the best journalism schools in the Midwest, probably in the country as well. And now if you could go back to your freshman year and do anything different within the journalism school, what would it be and why? <sighs> one thing I wish, this is one thing I wish I was better at. My freshman year, I was absolutely terrible on camera I I because now you see me like I'm on my show every week talking my head off but I was so scared to go on my freshman year and, um I'd never been on camera for anything before and it's just it was a really cool experience for me just to you know this is like what people do in the real world they some people their job is to be on camera mm -hmm. And I've really grown into that role over the past three and a half years, which I'm very proud of my progress because I was the most timid and shy person you could meet my freshman year. Now I'm pretty outgoing when it comes to these shows. So I've made a lot of progress since then. And I just want to thank you again for joining me on the show today after the break. Hey, have... oh, you're going to be on my show next week too. You're going to be playing a little game with me and Mr. Uh, Andrew Lind for the Wheel of Musical Expression. So I look forward to seeing you there, good sir. All right. Thank you for good. having me. Yep, I appreciate thank it. Thank you. After the break, Bella will be back with an interview as well. Have a good one, bro. Uh, that was a dope party. Oh, my God, yeah. We got to get home, though. How are we going to get home? Don't worry, bro. I'll take us home. I'll drive. You're going to drive drunk? Yeah, that's right. How about we just call a safe ride? What's a safe ride? A safe ride's a car that comes to pick you up. Uh, isn't that for people who are too lazy to learn how to drink and drive? No. It's a safe way to get home. 
All right, I guess that's better than driving. Okay, let's call one. Hi, can I get a safe friend? Call 785-864-7233 for a free safe ride home after a night out. a graduating student in J school so are you so excited you only have one week left that's insane I'm excited I'm nervous absolutely I'm ready also very uh, what is it called senior senioritis, senioritis. I have that I times feel that 10. and I'm a junior yeah so it only gets <laughs> I worse I, oh I can believe it I can believe it so you've been do doing a really cool internship can you tell me a little bit about that Yes, I can. I have been interning at an agency in Kansas City. Uh, their name is Woodruff. They do a bunch of stuff. Um, I'm on the social media team, uh, and I got offered a full-time position. That's incredible. So after graduation, I will be doing social media, which is actually not what I thought I was going to be doing. I love broadcast. Um, before broadcast, I thought I was going to be writing. So I've been like, you know, all over the place. But yeah, I'm very excited, very right. lucky. Yes. So you completely take a, took a turn from doing KUJH, which is <laughs> so cool. And now you're doing something completely different, but also kind of the same, because I know we get a lot of that, those skills in the yes. J school, learning oh, a lot for of sure. shot com stuff. So you're doing their social media. That's incredible. Yes. And you just get to see dogs and cats all day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was telling you earlier, yes, uh, yeah. our clients are like, from pets to farmers, we got everybody, but I work with like the pet side, of course, naturally. Um, and I'm looking at cute pictures of dogs and cats all day. So it's a good job, it's a great gig. Absolutely, <laughs> so do you plan to move to Kansas City at some point? Yes, probably around February, but Absolutely. as soon as possible, basically. Yes, yeah. no, I don't blame you. Kansas City is such a nice town. So are you from the Kansas City area or no? I'm from Wichita. Okay. ICT, baby. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm from Wichita. So I'll probably be moving back home yes. um, just after graduation and then apartment search, like yeah. just going at it. Do you kind of know of an area that you're kind of looking at in Kansas City or no? Have no idea. My job is in the crossroads area oh, in Kansas fine. City. So I would love that. Um, you know, price is expensive. They're so expensive. Yeah. So we'll see. <laughs> yeah, well, that would be such a fun area. I know a lot of my friends that are seniors are just graduated this past May. They're all looking in um, that kind of downtown yeah. where what's it's it beautiful. A lot, it's art, a lot of art, lot of light area. Oh yeah. Which I'm like, that is so. Always expensive. something happening <laughs> so there too. So expensive though. Yes. I'm like, that's incredible. Yeah. So I know there's a lot of young people that moved down there right after college. So you'll be, have so many people that you can hang out with, which is great. Yeah. <laughs> Meet all sorts of new people. I know. I already work with uh, one of the KU alumni. She graduated uh, this oh, spring. Great. So. Oh, that's so exciting. Yeah. Well, awesome. We got connections, Jayhawks. Find me in Kansas City. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Well, thank you for joining me, Lauren. Of course. Good luck in thank your you. job and everything after. I can't wait to hear all about it and all your Taylor Swift stuff <laughs> again. So that was great. But yes. we'll be back after a short break with Connor and Brennan with the news. Hey there, new car owner. You might be ready to hit the road, Speed Racer, but there's a few things you should know before getting behind the wheel. Don't worry, Jimmy. Let's start with D for direction. Every driver needs to know his directions when hitting the road. Without them, you may end up in some godforsaken country you never knew existed. O is for observations. When you finally get behind the wheel, you best know who and what are around you. So it's probably a good idea to finally clean that windshield, Jimmy. Lastly, we come to G, gratitude. It's a privilege to own a car in these trying times. So letting your neighbor in on the highway is just one example of how not to be a total ass when you jump on the turnpike. All right, Jimmy, you now know what it takes to be a competent driver. Good luck, you lovable scamp. Back, I'm Connor. And I'm Brendan. This is your Good Morning KU Friday Report. As more information comes out regarding a school shooting in Michigan, prosecutors have charged a 15-year-old boy with terrorism and first-degree murder. Oakland County prosecutors are also considering charges against the suspect's parents for allowing their son to have such easy access to a firearm. Four students were killed and seven more injured on Tuesday. Yet another government shutdown has been avoided after the United States Senate passed a short-term funding bill. President Biden is expected to sign the bill today, which is the deadline to prevent a shutdown. This bill will keep the federal government running through February 18th. Over 1,000 Florida manatees have died to an ecological disaster. A massive die-off of seagrass has left manatees with nothing to eat. 
The federal government has classified this as an unusual mortality event, prompting government assistance with other wildlife agencies. For the first time in recorded history, it has not snowed in Denver this year. Denver has never entered the month of December without a measurable amount of snow. The lack of snow has worsened the state's drought and dwindled the water supply, and has also called mass delays on ski resorts. Major League Baseball is experiencing its first lockout since 1990. The lockout is due to no progress being made in creating new labor contracts. Other heated issues with the lockout include player pay, competitive balance, and Major League Baseball using two different baseballs throughout the 2021 season without players or teams knowing. Major League Baseball blamed the different weighted balls on production issues caused by the pandemic. In local news, KU faculty has struggled with attendance after returning to in-person classes. English professor Laura Milkey says that in her class of 18, a third of the students are constantly absent. This trend has spread nationwide to college attendance as a whole. Over the last two years, there has been a 3.4% drop in undergraduate admission of universities nationwide. In sports, the Jayhawks bounced back after the loss to Dayton, beating Iona 96-83. Christian Brown took control of the game, recording 18 points and 7 rebounds. KU continues to be a defensive presence on the court forcing Iona to turn the ball over 18 times. The Jayhawks will take the court tonight at 6 p.m. to face St. John's in Queens, New York. KU Volleyball took down number 19 Oregon last night to reach the second round of the NCAA tournament. Led by Caroline Crawford and Caroline Bien, the Jayhawks swept the Ducks in a three-set upset victory. Crawford recorded 12 <laughs> kills, four blocks, and three aces, and Bien finished with 13 kills and nine digs. So I really think that most teams that have not been to the tournament or have a younger group playing um, would come in kind of frazzled or kind of unsettling vibes. I didn't feel that at once, not during the match, not before the match. Um, so I think everyone was just super confident going into it and just kind of attacking it. It's their winning run tonight at 7 p.m. where they will face the number 14 seed, Creighton Blue Jays. First of all, we, we sided out um, offensively at a high level, um, but you know, we served well. We were just really good in all phases. And uh, when we got pressed a little bit in the third set, we called a timeout. We had a great response after that. Head coach Ray Burchard looks to forward to playing an old foe. Kirsten's a good friend, uh, their head coach. She's done an outstanding job here. She's found a niche here at Creighton and made them uh, kind of the Gonzaga of uh, uh, mid-major volleyball here. I mean, they've been really, really good over time. So it'll be, I'm sure it'll be a great challenge. Obviously, they've got to take care of their business tonight, but uh, we would hope that we could have some of the epic uh, showdowns that we've had in the past if that does come to fruition. The KU football season ended with a narrow loss to West Virginia with the final score ending 34-28. Sophomore quarterback Jalen Daniels threw for 249 yards, a touchdown, and two interceptions. Jocks end with a 2-10 record and Lance Leifold's first season as head coach. And finally, in the NFL, the Chiefs will be coming off a bye week to face the Denver Broncos this Sunday at 7.20 p.m. The Chiefs hope to continue to prove that they are back to their former glory in this AFC West battle with the now 6-5 Broncos. Thank you for joining us for our last show and joining us throughout the semester. Good luck in these last couple weeks of finals and have a great rest of the semester, Jayhawks.